Hi, good day, Mr. Shadrach here with the Shadrach Safety Institute. Um, I was just thinking about the risk assessment project um, that you more or less maybe see in here. And um, I think it may be wise uh, to spend some time on um, that project having finished the risk assessment part of the course. Now we did, um, we actually did a part of this video already or a part of this project already. Um, but I think I had taken it from the table, right? The table that you're seeing here. So what I think I can do, um, this wouldn't really be a long recording, but I could um, just review the first piece of it, right? Um, I think the whole thing was done, but um, I may have assumed that everybody would have done the first part already, right? So I'll just review the first piece of it and see how this goes, right? Now, um, there is really no restriction on you doing the project, right? Um, the project doesn't fall under, you know, like an exam day in which you have to come and meet and write an exam. So I guess a really good idea would be to do the project. And as soon as, you know, we get the all clear, we can submit the project, right? Of course, that means you have to get it done. I think that is the way that I want to go anyway. Um, you know, if, if we are, uh, um, you know, I, I guess the ban on congregating, if that continues till September, that doesn't mean that the project have to wait till September here in Trinidad and Tobago. We can simply um, get a project done and submit it in the meantime, right? So I want to put an emphasis on this. Again, like I said, um, part of this is already on um, the YouTube channel. So just to repeat the first piece of it, and I'll get into that um, right now in fact, right? So um, in the first part of the project that you're looking at here, you really want to um, come up with about 150 to 200 words, right? And what you want to put in this is include in here the organization's name and location, and it could be locations, it could be more than one. Um, you know, location, if it's a fairly small location. Um, for example, it could be, like, you know, like, an, I guess, like an office, um, a warehouse, right? You could zone down in a couple of locations, that are more or less anyway. And the number of workers, right? A good idea here maybe to put in as well, um, the number of males, the number of females there. All right, um, so if we could read the first line, and I wouldn't really do all um, line by line. Let me just try to get this again here a bit more, a bit larger, right? Um, in terms of the view anyway. Right, maybe one more again. Right, so, um, yeah, right, so the first piece of it there, um, Right, so the first piece of it there, um, it, I guess we would have had it on top. So my organization knows and workers, right? So if you do um, these processes carry out to risk assess, example, site, and anything else that you can sell 150 to 200 words, right? Um, so I guess I'll do this paragraph here, right? So um, NGG Limited is a medium-sized garage with offices. Business that have been involved in accidents for insurance companies. So, the garage operates from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Wednesdays and is closed at the weekend. It will seven days, seven hours per day. Um, so they are staggered start and finish times in place, right? So, um, here, um, uh, we just 
to pinpoint it. Um, the more you can do with activities, the better, right? If you look at perhaps um, this line here, typical activities undertaken include this whole piece of it here, maybe to this stuff of subject. Here. Um, the reader, I was going to say that again, because the reason for this is that the reader, um, you know, is normally not in Trinidad or, you know, whatever part of the world. It, the, the, the readers for these are normally folks in the UK, right? Um, so you have to more or less describe them, right? Um, what you are talking about so that they'll have a good understanding of what you are saying, right? Don't use any, um, you know, um, concepts or any ideas that you think because, you know, that you are in this school that we know what you are talking about right our role is more for guidance and the final markers are in the uk anyway right um the risk assessment will cover the garage and spray boot activities and this is what i was saying you can you could zone them to some locations right so even though the company is um national general garage limited the whole company is just based on um, I'm not too sure that you're seeing it there because it's not there, I'm not, you're not seeing it there. But it is in the guidance to the project that you should have a, a read of that. You have to say here, at least to end this um, small paragraph, who is ultimately responsible and accountable for health and safety. Right. Um, so I guess in most companies that may be the HSE professional or the managing director. Um, here you have the finance director who reports directly to the managing director has the direct responsibility for health and safety. Right. Um, so really not hard. I mean, you start filling this out. You see how simple it goes. I mean, if you you know, I mean, when you check it with the computer anyway, the computer normally checks, um, you know, full stops and commas and numbers and whatever have you, right? So don't worry if you go over, you know, um, 10, 20 words, whatever have you, right? Um, so the second piece of this, the risk assessment, approximately 200 words, right? So, um, I guess the, the camera stopped there a bit, right? Um, at least, at least what I'm seeing on my end is not, not what the camera is um, picking up, right? Um, but what you must do here, um, I guess, right? Um, yeah, right. So I would say that the camera seemed to be stuck, right? Um, so I guess you can listen to the audio whenever it sorts itself out. Um, I guess that will be remedied, right? Um, I'm not sure what's going on with it anyway, right? Um, yeah, um, so I was saying, I guess if we could keep looking here, maybe I can probably turn it off, right? Um, maybe just turn off the backbeat here anyway, right? Um, and see if it's better, right? So, yeah, um, so I was saying here that, um, uh, what what is required here is how you will do the risk assessment and um, that that involves um, I think some things we covered in the lessons before but also some common sense techniques for example like inspections walkthroughs um, talking to personnel in the company doing research etc right so a lot of it though is actually based on research this case I'm highlighting here um, the internet, I guess, and get some research done on, I wouldn't really say your company, but I guess the hazards that can be found in your company, right? Um, so I guess the one you're looking at here is that um, if this is a motor vehicle repair shop, then there must be some sort of guidance there, some sort of um, literature out there that pertains to hazards, you know, in a motor vehicle repair shop. 
the agency website has quite a lot of them. Um, so then uh, I guess um, if you can get to those sites and get a look on it, then that that would be um, good, right? Um, so there are two mentioned here, right? There are two. There are two mentioned here, and um, the the two that is mentioned here is um, the HSG website. Well, not really the HSG website, but the HSE website. And then you have the guidance documents that um, would normally be written for all of those hazards you have out there. I'm not sure if you understand that. I'm trying to put back on the webcam there that, um, that uh, there's literally a guidance for all hazards that you may come across, right? So if you're in Google, what you have to do is just put in um, HSG and you put whatever your hazards is and then what you'll get is um is the hazards for for your um for your company right um so there's another one right um i'm not sure what's going on with this one every this is a quite stressful boy um because um you know it takes a lot of preparation in the background then to then to do this right um but right, I was saying there's another one which is known as ACOPS, right? Uh, this, which is this word down here, the Health and Safety Code of Practices. So there's normally one of that two for every hazard, right? So case in point, if you are looking at maybe a company that has um, a toxic chemical or whatever, have you can just put in ACOPS four, and you can put the chemical, right? Or, or toxic or irritant chemical or whatever have you. Right. Um, so the point here is that you have to do some research. Um, some of the activities that in getting the hazards um, out will be inspections and whatever have you. But then some of them is actually um, some of them they are actually research as well. Right. Um, so I think I would probably just stop the video. Yeah. Right. So. Um, so I started by looking up references to good practices relating to our organization. The HSC website had lots of resources, for example, health and safety in motor vehicle repair and associated industries. And this, of course, is a site that you have to give on source anyway, as a point of reference, was a good source of information. After looking at sources of information, I then went around the workshop and talked the people who were doing the job, right? So this could probably be two activities here, or two ways in which how you would complete the risk assessment. One would be a walkthrough, and again, this would be sort of, you know, uh, verbal communication, right? They give me information that wasn't obvious. I'm just a visual inspection, for example. A lot of the workers didn't know that there were dust masks available for the reasons why they should be worn. I also checked the accident book to see what types of incidents had occurred over the past, for the last 12 months, and whether any of these incidents were reoccurring. I also checked the reason for sick, sick absence, again, to see if there were any reoccurring teams or ill health, right? Um, so when assessing the control measures, I also referred to some of the HSC approved codes or practices or guidance documents. For example, when looking at control measures for dust in the workplace, the dust in the workplace, general principles of protection, guidance note, EH4 website, right? So this is a combination of like real, you know, um, walking through and seeing that you're talking to persons or talking to persons and actually doing a bit of research on the internet to get a couple of sites. Right, and more so not the um, not those unapproved sites, but really approved sites like the HSE sites and you know um, uh, good sites. Then, right, uh, approved codes of practices. Each each documents are normally a requirement. Um, what's a requirement? This is coming out of a requirement in the UK um, for the cost regulations anyway. Right, um, so once that piece is done, you then get down into the 
the risk assessment itself. And again, we did this before. So I think all I'll do here is just to recap um, the first line anyway, right? So what you would want to do is to um, get about 10 hazards. There's about 10 you have to get. And you have to get, I made a note of this in the first video, um, the hazard category and the hazard. And to take note that it's two different things, right? Here you see the hazard category being hazardous substances and then the hazard being dust, right? Who might be harmed and how? So they have the who, all workers, customers, others visiting the, of the organization. And then they have the how, right? High concentration of process dust are always present from the routine and frequent activities being carried out. Since there is no dust extraction, people breathe in hazardous dust, which can cause anything from short-term irritation to long-term serious health conditions. Um, what are you doing already, which would be your present controls? What further controls need to be done? And again, the least that you are doing already would signify that you have more, more to do, right? A time scale for each one to be done and then the responsible person. So what I'll do, I'll probably just um, see if we could end with this one, right? Um, I think again, I made a note of this on the first video that um, uh, what some people were doing, well, number one, they were mixing up the hazard and the hazard category, that's the first thing. The other thing I've been seeing is that people are not numbering these. Now you should number them because what happens is that the numbers are linked back into the responsible person as to say who is to do what you have said, right? If you have said enclosed area to be set up for sand and grinding operations, including that would that will include suitable local exhaust ventilation. Who is to do this? So the mistake to make is just to put your manager for everything, right? If you look at your workshop manager, is responsible for one, but also for number three, use of face masks in conjunction with extraction system, etc. right? So um, each of these also have a time scale. A big mistake is that students are just put in, you know, like six months for all of these or one month for all of these when logically some of these may take um, less time and then some may take more time as well, right? Um, so that is it there, believe it or not. I am, um, you know, like I said, I'm not too sure what happens with these um, with these recordings unless we are finished with them. And then I'm often pressed to submit something for the week anyway, right? So I have another Hopefully you can see this one. I really wanted to show those of us who don't know um, where to get those forms from, right? So I did a trial of this before and it did work. So hopefully it is working now, right? So what you will do is go on the Nibosh website. You can simply put Nibosh home. Um, you can click your subjects. I've already done that already. I've clicked the National General Certificating Occupational Safety and Health. But what you want to get is the very last tab. Now it takes a bit of a, a minute, right? So um, uh, these recordings don't allow me to put in any music, right? To kill the time. So we'll have to wait a little bit. So what you want to get is resources, the last the last tab. And what you want to do here, I can have it saved. So if it's taken long, I'll probably just go and open the one that I have saved or click on the one that I have saved, right? Um, so what you want to get into is the NGC, sorry, NG2 practical guidance. You want to open that. And what you'll see is this, you'll see NG, NG2 uh, checklist. The example we were looking at, NG2 forms, electronic submission, NG2 forms, written submission. Now what you want to click on is electronic submission. Right, so you click on electronic submission. By the way, the forms are pretty much the same, in case you were worried about that. Uh, but the project is submitted electronically anyway. Right, you want to get the electronic forms and open those forms. And um, 
and we'll make sure it comes up and I'll probably just share that screen. And then that will be the same phone and um, use it, you know, as a guest, as a rap, right? Um, again, those of us who, I mean, if you have the time and you think you have it really good, you can probably start typing it. It isn't really hard. Once you get a start on it, um, you'll see how fast it goes anyway, right? So I am going to open it here and what I'll do just to make sure that um, we are seeing the same formula. Doesn't it make sure here that I'm gonna click new share on my side here. See if I see it and just make sure that you all are looking at that form, right? So this would be um, the form, right? Uh, that is online. Um, I guess if you have it downloaded, they could start typing on it, right? Um, you know, uh, literally by the time you start a couple of lines, you need that, that 200 words anyway, right? And, um, you know, uh, we are here, uh, you know, to look, but to look at them once you are completed with them anyway, right? And you don't have to be completed with the whole thing, I guess. You can probably give it a try. Um, maybe do about five hazards, right? Send it to me, see if it's okay. And then keep on going again, right? Remember, do I said that our role is more one of um, guidance and uh, we are not the final marker for these projects, right? The latter piece of it, in case you are finished, um, for example, from uh, part three and four and stuff. This is actually on the other video, right? So um, this is actually on the school's channel already. So you can have to pick this one up from here. This video would have more or less served as a means of um, as a means of um, us covering the first piece that I thought that may have been left out, right? So um, I guess if you have to you know, uh, look at this one. Again, these, like I said, I'm not quite happy with the recording sometime, but it, it does take time, right? Um, literally, again, literally I've been here more than two hours trying to set the whole thing up anyway, right? Um, so as I think I'm seeing the camera there now, it seems to be running good now, right? So I'll just say some stuff I said in the beginning that, um, that, that, that is not really preventing us from doing the project and submitting the project and getting the certificate for the project, right? For those who know, it's it's two, it's two, um, two courses to complete the National Journal Certificate. You have the NG1 exam and you have the project, right? So the project is electronic, as you'd have just seen, and I guess the form is still up there, right? Uh, electronic meaning that you have to email it yeah, you can have to email it into us, right? And I guess we have to email it back to me, Bosch, anyway, right? But um, being electronic, then, is that that doesn't, that doesn't, you know, hinder or that isn't affected by the ban on classes that are physical congregation, right? So um, what, what we'll have to do in the weeks coming, we'll have to... You know, because I mean, this is May month anyway, right? So that we would have to try to get some of these projects in. And I mean, when I say some, maybe all, and um, get some submissions going to the wash, right? So try to work on it because you really don't want to be caught in the deadline, right? When we do give a deadline, this is still more or less now um, voluntary information. The first class on a Saturday, though, a lot of them would have had this done already, right? And um, I know there's one student in the second class, I won't want to call any names anyway, but there's one student in the second class that did a very good project, right? And so um, I guess if he can do it and he's not even in safety, I guess, um, you know, the rest of us can give it a try as well, right? So um, I would stop this one here and uh, see if we could salvage it anyway and probably put it up on YouTube, right? Try to give it a go. Um, if you want to get the project sheets though, please check online first anyway, right? And um, if not, if that doesn't work, then you can let me know, I guess, in my um, in my time away from, I guess, you know, the family anyway, I'll be able to send it. But of course it's online. I did show you where it was there. 
um, get to the new about website, click your subject, click resources, get entry tool pack, and it's right here. It's, it's just electronic form sample and everything is there as well. So maybe um, five easy steps there to get that sample going, right? So have a good one, everybody. Um, be safe. I would hopefully um, do another one, right? Um, uh, with, you know, the other parts of the syllabus on risk assessment and uh, more or less anyway, um, possibly by next week, right? So enjoy the rest of your day, folks. Bye.